Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for today's video. Following up with last week's video, um, we're going to be talking about this concept of being a well-rounded person and these slices of pizza and not pie. And specifically today we want to focus on the slice that is employment or work or your job um, and, and what, what kind of role that plays in your life because it's a pretty important one for, for all of us. So with employment, where do you guys want to start? Do you have thoughts? Well, I, I just think that like as we're talking about this, we've just been saying some things about how to be a well-rounded person, there has to be certain elements of your life that um, exist so that you can find like reach your full potential and find happiness in life. And employment is one of those things, although um, I don't know that this necessarily needs to only look like kind of the traditional job right? Although there are some benefits to that that maybe we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but this also looks some um, like just having specific things that you're working toward, right? That there's work in your life. First passionate subject. Your comment on it doesn't have to look like a traditional job. We went, uh, was it last week or no, it was two weeks ago that we went to a conference in Salt Lake, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it was actually a business conference based in employment. And one of the statistics that was thrown out by one of the presenters was that 60% of employees that are entering the workforce now have some type of side hustle. And so the job market is definitely changing, right? My level of passion is you still need, when beginning, you need a traditional level job. And we can talk about why in a little bit, but sure. I'm very, I, I think that's huge. Maybe you should tell us about why. <laughs> okay. You ready for that? <laughs> We're sure. ready. Yeah. Okay. Tell us. Okay. So I think employment is one of those catch 22 things, right? And here's what I mean by it. If we woke up every morning, how many of us would choose to jump out of bed and go to work? Probably none of us, nope. right? If I did what made me happy, minus today because it's snowing, right? I would be on a lake somewhere jet skiing. That is what I would do. That's what I love. That's what makes me happy. Um, but I can't do that. I have bills to pay. I have responsibilities. And so I'm going to have to get a job, right? We live in a world where this is allowing us to do something that's not super traditional. And I think a lot of us are trying to do that. How often do you guys, when you work with maybe younger teenagers, they're like, I'm just going to be a YouTuber. 100% so, of the time. Yeah, so often. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's either, like, I, ha I actually had this conversation with um, one of my clients, I don't know, two or three days ago, and she's 16, maybe? Anyway, and said something along the lines of, well, I'll either be a vet, but maybe I'll just be a YouTuber. Like, that's what I'd really like to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, at least there's, like, one hint of, like, a traditional career path there. Uh, but yeah, I think all of my preteens and teens, without fail, when I ask them what they want to do, a YouTuber is in there somewhere. Yeah. What about you? And it doesn't have to be YouTube. I hear gamer a lot. Yeah. Right? Young boys want to play games. Influencer, right? I hear yeah. that Influencer. a lot. Yeah. Um, and those are great, I think, in the beginning as a side hustle. There's, like we were talking earlier today about some of the things that you're doing for graphics for this. There's no way I could do this. I couldn't do this without that, right? The way that I like to explain it, and then I'll try and make it quick because I feel like I'm monopolizing everything. If you take the symptoms of depression, pull them straight out of the DSM, right? Low energy, low motivation, fatigue, uh, decreased socialization, no productivity, all of these things, every one of those areas can be influenced by a job even if you don't like it. You have a reason and a purpose to get out of bed every morning. You're forced to socialize. Now this is kind of changing because some people work from home, but even then you might have team meetings or whatever, sure. but you're forced to socialize. You're forced to build a skill set. Um, as you build things at work, like I go back to going through college, I worked in a grocery store. It was fun to work with the Coke guys and the Pepsi guys and build some cool Christmas displays, Santa Claus out of 12 pack sodas, right? 
as you do these things. I always wondered who did that. (laughs) It was Josh. It's Josh. It's usually the vendor. Josh doesn't have that vision. (laughs) But anyway, my point is, in, in short, the benefits of employment are huge. And I think that's why there is value in the traditional piece before hopping into some of like these creative spaces. And I think that they can combat mental health even if your job isn't necessarily fun. Yeah, I I actually have this conversation, I feel like pretty regularly where like a client or, or someone will tell me like, if I could just take like a few months off of work and like get everything together, I would feel so much better. And I always tell them, that's the last thing you need to be doing if you want to feel better. <laughs> um, and because of those things you just said, right? It's not it. everything about going to work, even if it's not necessarily something you love, can influence those negative symptoms that we experience. Um, I remember during when COVID first happened, I worked for the school district here, and they shut down the school district in March, and I didn't go back to work until August. And at first, it was awesome. At first, I I sat home, and I stayed up all night, and I watched Netflix, and I played video games, and my wife also worked for the school district, so we were home together, and it was fun. But it was only fun for like a little while, and then I got really bored, and then I got really like all those things, low motivation, low energy, and I just like didn't feel great. And then I remember when the school next school year had started back up and I put on like jeans and I'm like, I don't remember the last time I had to wear jeans. <laughs> right? But it felt good to like actually get ready and go do something. Even though maybe before it shut down I would have said, Yeah, this would be great if I could just take four months off. But when I was going back I actually felt really good and I was really excited to go back and be more productive. Sure. I think this kind of brings up this concept too that the things that feel good in the moment are not really necessarily the things that are best for our mental health in the long sure. run, right? In the moment, it sounds nice to stay home. It sounds nice to not have to meet all the demands of a job. It's nice to avoid all of the different anxiety triggers and depressive things that happen because you're going to work. You know, it's, it's hard. Work is hard. You come home and you're tired. And, and there are a lot of things like that that it would feel so good in the moment to avoid those things. The problem is over the long haul, that makes you less effective as a person. You don't learn how to build up the tolerance to be able to do a lot of hard things because you're always making your environment adapt to you instead of you learning to adapt more to your environment, mm-hmm. right? And um, like, I mean, I, I know that this is not really maybe one of the more popular things that people think about right now because we hear all about like, yeah, your job should be something that, you know, doesn't define you and that um, doesn't take over your life. And I think that there there's some truth to that, but then also that can be taken way too far to the point that we sort of become soft as people. Like we can't tolerate some of these really difficult things that really it would be better for us to have the skills to stick out and learn that ability to tolerate long term. As you were talking about that, the thought came to my mind and I want to ask this question. This is not research backed, so I'm just curious what you guys have seen. Um, what level of people, what percentage, let's go back to the pizza rather than the pie. Um, what percentage of people wake up and are generally motivated to be productive in their day? I'm not talking necessarily employment, but what, what level of people wake up and like on a Saturday, the first thing they do is cleaning the bathroom, mowing the lawn. Like what percentage of people wake up and immediately start with productive things? I wish you had a real number because I have no idea. Yeah. My I, wife is really good at that. Uh-huh. Um, and I am not at all. Like, she will make her half of the bed with me still in it. Like, if I'm <laughs> will not she up, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, and, and it's like a really good trait that she has, but I don't, I, I'm only married to her. I don't know how many other people are good like that. Because <laughs> I would say Cher is probably that way. Yep. Yeah. Well, you probably, I mean, both of you guys I'm wake probably up and go to, work, go to the gym and work out. Like we talked about this before. You guys are both, by the time you show up to work, you've already done your exercise for the day and you've been awake for three hours. And I have rolled out of bed probably 45 minutes before I show up here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's the reason why I ask this question. I love the idea of a side hustle. I don't love filming, but I love being with you guys and talking about these concepts because I think it is something that could be beneficial for others and is definitely beneficial for me. But this is why I don't love the idea of most people wanting to do some kind of side hustle full time. Uh, Even folks that I have worked with that do things like 
DoorDash or Uber Eats or Uber. It's you get to set your own schedule and they almost always end up working way less than what they thought. This I think is the benefit that comes from having that, I'll call it a traditional nine to five. You get less say, but it forces you into a sense of belonging with people. It forces you into skill development. It forces you into socialization. And you can hate it because your job doesn't have to be your career. It's just got to be a time period to help you build this skill set so that you then can do the side hustle and grow it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, like when we talk about motivation, motivation is something that fluctuates quite a bit, right? There are some days I wake up and I do feel motivated to get up and do chores or whatever it is as few and far between as they are, but they happen. And like just knowing myself, it's important for me to have a job that's structured so that I have like, even if I'm not motivated, I have a responsibility and hopefully enough discipline to still show up at work. Even if I wake up some days and I'm like, I'd rather just lay here, but it it helps to have like that level of accountability that maybe a full-time side hustle wouldn't provide for you because there's a lot of freedom to be like, yeah, I will just stay in bed. No one's making me get up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I I don't know that I'm like completely in the camp of traditional employment and hours are are the only way to go. But I do think that it's really important to look at whatever your situation is and make sure that you're pushing yourself, right? If you're in a job, if you're in an employment situation and it's not challenging you, you're not growing and if you're not growing then you're doing the opposite Mm -hmm. right if you're if you're not increasing your ability to tolerate difficult things in life then your ability to tolerate difficult things is decreasing it's not something that stays stagnant and so you know i i don't know especially like with the way that employment is heading right now i think a lot of people do have side hustles and do their own thing. And I don't necessarily always think that that's bad, but I do think that it's something that we have to be really, really careful about because too much of adapting your environment to make things easy for you doesn't make for a mentally healthy person in the long run. Yeah. I learned about this from somewhere. I don't remember where, but kind of like almost as imagining your brain has like so many slots for stressful things, right? You can only, you can only be dealing with so many things at once. And you kind of get to choose. And if you choose things that are that push you, but that you, you like the challenge or that you maybe are more motivated to do, like maybe it's like career things, that can those are good stressors, right? And they help push us and help us grow and help us like cope and combat a lot of mental health symptoms. But if you don't put those in, those slots will get filled anyway by things that we aren't choosing and things that are distressing and things that are causing us problems. So we kind of have the power to like, pick our stresses for the most part there are things obviously out of our control but if you pick stressors that provide you like a healthy challenge it's actually a lot more motivating than demotivating like our stresses we don't choose does that make sense totally and i think that like along the lines of what you're saying if you don't pick some of what your stressors are your brain might insert things Mm -hmm. that are not shouldn't inherently be that stressful, sure. but they become that stressful because they're taking up those slots. Does that make, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Yeah. Like I sometimes think, um, you know, when there have been <laughs> moments in my life that I haven't had many stressors going on, it's funny the things that my brain will plug in and say, oh, you should be stressed about, <clears throat> about this thing or that thing. Yeah. Um, because it's not something I would traditionally be stressed about. It's just that I didn't have an, enough other things, I guess. Yeah, and maybe this is like a tangent, but there's like a there's like a sweet spot of stress, right? If something is too stressful, it will not motivate us, and if something is too easy, we will lose the drive to do it. Um, like a good example, we play video games on our team lunches sometimes, and I just slam Shara in over and over and over, and, <laughs> and it, it probably it, demotivates her to keep playing. It does, it, and it's stressful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fun lunch has turned it into stress lunch. <laughs> Whereas if like Shara was just slamming me over and over again and the rest of the team, which would never happen. But if it did, (laughs) like she'd probably lose interest in playing because it's just too easy, right? It's got to be in that sweet spot where there's like the stresses in our, in our life provide us enough challenge that it like feels accomplishing and gratifying to do, but not so challenging that it crushes us and not so easy that it's, there's no drive to be better. Yeah. Well, you know, this is another reason that I say that maybe 
there can be some other options for employment this way too. And I don't even, like we're using the word employment, but I don't know that it necessarily has to be that, right? There were a lot of years where I was home for the majority of the day with my children. And I would say that work is so much harder sure. than coming yeah, to work. That. And that those were times in my life that were very stressful and very hard. And I do feel like I probably grew the most as a person, but that was not a nine to five job. That was a 24 seven job, yeah. right? I just want to touch base on what you said, and I'm literally going to shut up because I've soapboxed this to death. <laughs> I feel like I've talked all the time. Um, do you? Good, because I do too. Um, I heard a quote one time, and I won't get it verbatim, but the idea was being underwhelmed by responsibility leads to being overwhelmed by things that are of less importance. And so I think that's really fitting with what you say and finding that sweet spot. You have to have a certain level of of stressors to motivate you to move and be a body in motion because being underwhelmed or overwhelmed can both be problematic. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like we've gone over pretty well, like the importance of doing work and being motivated and some of the benefits of, uh, of work and in, of any kind or employment on your mental health. Um, maybe very quickly we could touch on like, what are some of the things that make it difficult for people to to work or to find employment or to be employed consistently? Um, I think that there are quite a few things. One of the things that I think that we often see as therapists is that uh, the the world keeps getting, I don't mean to say it keeps getting easier, but I mean, there are more like comforts and luxuries mm. that we have. I mean, we don't have to work very hard to get a lot of the comforts that we have in our lives. And um, as a result, I think a lot of us have been raised in spaces where we weren't in charge of a whole lot. Maybe we didn't have to do a whole lot of things to uh, get through our day, to make our meals, to clean our house, like all of these different kinds of things. And when you have been raised in a situation where you have not been taught to work, work is not something that feels good to you. It, it's not necessarily something that comes as... Um, as easily or as inherently and even the rewards of work aren't something that people maybe notice as much and so this is really a skill that has to be built so i've noticed that with with um people that i work with who've maybe had situations like that in their life it is harder for them to have the motivation to find employment and also to stick out employment when when they're when they do have a job just because some of those kind of gratification things that could have been learned early in life really weren't. I was talking with an individual in my neighborhood last night about this. Uh, he's an engineer and it was very interesting. He not too terribly long ago was promoted at work and I asked him how it was all going and this and that. And, um, we talked about this, the distinguishing factor of like, if you get in with a company and stay with a company, they give you two or 3% raises every year, but they'll spend all of this extra money in talent acquisition, sign on bonuses, you know, all these perks. Um, but the only way to really advance your salary potential is by shifting companies. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a hard thing. I think a lots of work over stress, high demands or expectations, low pay, inability for growth opportunity, or at least the perception of that. Um, I think all of those things factor into this. And so when you see a company who you've worked with for 10 or 15 years, will go out and hire somebody who's three years out of school and will pay them 10,000 a year more than you, but you've dedicated 10 years with them. That's hard. Why would you not leave? Um, so I think that makes it hard. I think Overwork, underpay, that's a pretty common one. Um, and I think there is something to be said, you know, even as though we're pushing this idea of work, there are times when the work environment is a non-healthy one. Mm -hmm. And the answer is you are overwhelmed at work and you should find a way to step back. There is truth to that too, right? Yeah. Did you have thoughts on things that make it hard for work? Uh, I a little bit, maybe less insightful than your thoughts, but I, when I reflect on like my own experience of being in college and looking at my work opportunities going forward, 
Um, I remember just like a, a big sense of being overwhelmed by I've got to make enough money to provide for myself and then I got married and I have a baby and then those kind of things. But also like I have to work for so many years. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's like so much of my life. And I think that can be really overwhelming and daunting, like especially if you're just starting into a career field or if you're just out of high school or college or whatever it is and you like have worked so hard and just to think I've got 30 more years of doing this. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. And uh, I think that's that can be really demotivating or overwhelming for people. It was for me. Um, and it, it's just helped me a lot using some of the things we talked about, right? Just take, it's just one day at a time. I just have to go to work today, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and 30 years will come eventually, but today I just have to work, right? Just this one day, so. Right. You know, one of the other things I'm just thinking as you are saying this, um, cause I, I've brought this up a couple of times around the office. Cause I know that there's kind of this thing going around about lazy girl jobs, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like that this is kind of the ideal is that you get a lazy girl job. If you're not familiar with that term, you'll have to look it up, but it's like you get a job that kind of fits with your needs so that you can work from home only the hours that you want to, and you can take plenty of time off for mental health and to take care of all of your social things. And, and granted, like, I think sometimes we start to listen to that and think, oh, I should be able to have a job like that and still meet all of my needs, Mm. right? And the reality is that a lazy girl job, I think is a really good way to step into, hey, I gotta build some skills so that I can maybe do a little more work in my life. But I don't think it's really actually a great place to um, to say, End hey, goal. <laughs> right, yeah. like this is the best place for me to be. I'm going to grow so much as a person right yeah. here because I, I think that people think that it sounds like that. You think you're going to spend all this time working on your health and your mental health. But what really ends up happening is you spend hours and hours scrolling on your phone and hanging out and not feeling great and saying, well, I can't handle more of a job than this. I feel like that's one of the things that's, I've been so grateful for in working with you. Um, is that I have had to figure out, I've learned myself, I work really hard so that I can be lazy. To what end? Okay, so I I create a position where I get to retire at 45. What am I gonna do? (laughs) Go mow your line? (laughs) Go mow your lawn in like really straight (laughs) lines over and over over again. Yeah. (laughs) But there's a lot of growth that comes and I, I like that. I don't know that I've heard a lot about this lazy girl job, but. I like the way you framed it. You're building a skill set so that you can then create something different that you want. That's genius. It's kind of rooted in what you were talking about earlier, right? Like if you live too comfortably or and are not challenging yourself in that sweet spot of stress and challenge, you're not growing and you're not progressing and then you don't feel good. And that's kind of like, I don't know, a simple formula, I guess. Right. And it feels really good to do something like a lazy girl job that feels so good in the moment. And in the long run, yeah. it's not really a positive thing for your mental health. Yeah. I think it's fair to probably conclude that regardless of what this looks like, employment is actually beneficial for your mental health. Um, there are times when it's not, and it's the overwhelming. Um, but regardless, it sounds like we're all in agreement that employment is actually beneficial for mental health. Yeah. 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 We need productivity, I think. And yeah. employment gives you a easy way to be productive. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to add before we close it up? No. I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for joining us for today's episode. Like always, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. We'd love to talk to you and uh, keep talking about this topic. I'm sure we'll revisit it more in the future. But thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Thank you.